Tokatu. Uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Te mangai o te whare. I call Lewis O'Wall. Uh, tēnā koe te mangai o te whare. It is my absolute pleasure to speak on this third reading of the Miners' Court Consent to Relationships Legislation Bill uh, that seeks to ensure those who are 16 and 17 years of age in Aotearoa, New Zealand, who want to marry, who want to be engaged in a civil union or, in fact, a formalised de facto relationship, will do so uh, not through the consent of their parents, uh, but through the consent of the court. Uh, in doing this, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my colleague, Jo Hayes, who I also co-chair the cross-party Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians, and say I'm incredibly proud of you, Jo, your advocacy, uh, your uh, being a champion uh, for ending forced marriages uh, in New Zealand, and I want to reiterate that this is a uh, give Kate a voice moment. This is the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage in New Zealand, and actually we've finally realised the power that women have across this house if we work together. I also must acknowledge uh, Dr Jackie Blue, who uh, actually started this process through her advocacy and work with organisations such as Shakti when she was the uh, National Party List MP based in Mount Roskill. And it does really speak to, uh, I guess, the relationships that we develop with our communities, uh, understanding some of our community needs and aspirations, and then working with them constructively and pulling in partners to make sure that we find solutions to real problems. And I'd also like to congratulate the New Zealand National Party for allowing one of your colleagues to put a bill uh, into the ballot that actually has had a few members' names to it, starting with Dr Jackie Blue, ending with uh, Joe Hayes. That means we'll have a piece of legislation that's uh, fit for our purpose and is going to ensure that forced marriages do not happen uh, in New Zealand. I'm going to take us through a bit of a history lesson because I think it's really important. So where did this whole 16, 17-year-olds uh, be allowed to marry with the consent of their parents actually come from? It actually came from the Marriage Act of 1955, but actually if we go back even further, it was since 1933 that if you were aged 16 and 17, uh, actually under 21, that you could get married with the consent uh, of your parents. So we'd, we'd said their minimum age was 16. What was it before that? It was actually 12. So in New Zealand, you could get married uh, if you were 12, if you were a girl, and 14 uh, if you were a boy. And that was based on the English Marriage Acts that we inherited when we were colonised. So the first Marriage Validation Act was 1842. So uh, this whole issue about being able to marry from the age of 16 came from uh, 1933 piece of legislation. So forced marriages in New Zealand, what is the context? What was the evidence? Uh, between 2000 and 2006, actually Shakti started reporting issues of forced marriage in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Now I've been able to find some data, so between 2011 and 2016, Shakti had worked with over 300 young people suspected of forced marriage. So these were victims, girls aged between 14 and 16 who became engaged. And the shocking part of this is that actually there were girls as young as 10 in New Zealand who'd been engaged to an older male. In 2007, Shakti and New Zealand NGOs presented their concerns to CEDAW regarding forced marriage and the specific impact on migrant and refugee communities. CEDAW made a recommendation that New Zealand should actually address this issue. In 2009, a petition was led by Jane Pritchard uh, from Pacific Women's Watch regarding forced marriage and was presented to the House of Parliament. In 2010, the Select Committee Outcome Report to Parliament acknowledged that forced and underage marriage was an issue in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and urged the government to address this issue. Uh, unfortunately, the government failed to address that issue in 2010. Uh, so what happened? Well, what happened was 
Uh, so actually, I'll say the concluding uh, observations from CEDAW committee uh, in June 2012 provided strong recommendations to the New Zealand government to do something about forced marriage. That inspired uh, Dr Jackie Blue to write a bill. And she wrote that bill as the inaugural co-chair of the cross-party women's group, uh, our Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians. And I also want to acknowledge uh, our colleague, the Honourable Carmel Sepuloni, who was also the first inaugural co-chair. And so they wrote this bill, Jackie did, got it through a caucus and got it into the ballot. In February uh, 2015, our Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians became a champion of this kaupapa. How did we do that? Uh, we actually became the first purple country in the world to end forced marriage. It's part of the end child brides kaupapa. And how did we achieve that? Because over 80 per cent of this parliament voted to end forced marriage and to end child brides. And I do have to acknowledge that at that time, I believe we could have got 100 per cent, but some of the ministers were unable to sign that petition. And so I am incredibly proud uh, that we were able, as women in all of our political parties, to talk to our men in our parties to support this kaupapa, and overwhelmingly they did. So I thank our male colleagues for actually understanding how important this issue was and standing with us, uh, given we were collectively saying we need your help to address this particular issue. Now, this whole issue, in terms of an international uh, context, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, became uh, it, it was elucidated on the 11th of October 2012, which was the first International Day of the Girl Child. And that first International Day of the Girl Child highlighted this issue of forced marriage, child brides. There are 1.1 billion girls worldwide who are married, uh, some of them, a third of them, before the age of 15. You know, this is a big issue. Girls as young as five years of age are given away to men. They lose their childhoods. They have unwanted and life-threatening pregnancies. They lose the opportunity of an education. They lose life opportunities. They suffer psychological abuse. They suffer physical abuse, and they're expected to provide sex to their husbands from that young age. So what happens? They have ripped vaginal walls. There are internal ruptures, which result in permanent incontinence. And actually, for some of those girls, they die on the night they consummate their marriage. This is how strikingly repugnant this practice is globally. And for us as a parliament to prioritise this issue and to actually work together as women and men, as colleagues, uh, is, is something that we should be incredibly proud of. Um, I think the whakatauki that uh, Jo Hayes created at the end of her kōrero is incredibly poignant because what it speaks to is the power of us to work together. This place is incredibly adversarial. There's a lot of conflict. But there are actually some issues where we can put politics aside and actually work as a parliament for the betterment of specific groups in our society who are facing you know, terrible, horrible circumstances. And so um, I just want to say that uh, as uh, a member of our Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians, it's one of the most satisfying roles uh, co-chairing that group uh, that I could ever imagine. Because we're changing the world. You know, we're helping protect a vulnerable group of people. And we're also making a statement as a country that we will do everything we can to contribute to the global eradication of ending child brides and actually fulfilling the potential of the Sustainable Development Goals. And for people who don't think it's that relevant in Aotearoa, New Zealand, it is. And what we're trying to do is create a global consciousness around these types of issues. So again, can I just finally say, uh, Kapai Joe Hayes, you will go down in history 
And it's particularly poignant with uh, our colleague Jan Logie in the House at the moment, because some of the bills that have been passed this year, call it serendipity or whatever, but the spirit of Kate Shepherd is with all of us. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Order. Point of order, the Honourable Tracy Martin. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to make a personal explanation to